Welcome in to another broadcast on Life as God Intended. I'm Don Brzezinski. Thanks for joining me. What should we expect in our Christian life? Many believers mistakenly strive to be more like Christ, believing it is their responsibility to carry out ministry in service to God. Others sit back and do nothing, waiting for God to act. These two opposing viewpoints prompt a critical question. Should we be aggressive or passive in our Christian walk? The answer is neither. Don't seek a ministry. Anticipate the fruit of your union life in Christ. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos when I upload them. So what's the difference between anticipation and striving? Well, anticipation means to expect, to look forward to, to await or wait for. Whenever we find ourselves either passively paralyzed or actively striving for something, it is often a fleshly response, a deception designed to attempt to meet our needs apart from God, which really don't meet our needs at all. This is Satan's means of robbing us of God's best for our lives. So what should we do? Well, I would suggest that we can only do what we see Christ doing in us as our life. God spoke this truth to my heart regarding my involvement in Cross Life Ministries many years ago. And he used 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 24 to clearly speak to me. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. The way I paraphrase that is, the God who calls you to it will also do it. You see, the focus of faithfulness is not so much on us, but on Christ himself. Because he is faithful, you and I can depend on him to do what he has called us to do. I like to refer to it as a union of faithfulness or a faithfulness in union. You see, it is the faithfulness of Christ as our life that enables us to be faithful to God's calling for any ministry that he has assigned us to. You and I, if we're Christians, are one in Christ, one in one spirit with his spirit. And so we are in union with him at the new birth through regeneration. And God has created us with two basic needs as human beings, one for security and the other for significance. And through the lies of self, a sinful deception, the flesh patterns of sin that we've all developed through the course of our life seek to entice us, or Satan using those pattern propensities in the desire of the soul, he seeks to entice us to attempt to independently get those needs met apart from God. And as a result, many well-meaning Christians have sought to do some ministry for God in an attempt to please him and meet their own inherent needs. I must confess that for the very very beginning of my Christian life, I fell into that category. However, God doesn't need our service. That might surprise you. Nor, does, nor has he made us to ultimately attempt to please him. 
He has a much greater purpose for our lives, which is union participation, or what we read in John's Gospel through the words of Christ, learning to abide in Him. You see, abiding in Him is allowing Him to be our very life. It is not an imitation of Christ, but a participation in Christ. We are made to be partakers of Christ. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 14. We are not independent selves trying to live for God, but once again, we are union selves in Christ. He is the vine and we are the branches. A branch does not strive to bear fruit or to work for the vine. <laughs> no, a branch is connected. It's joined. It's in union with the vine. And so ours is an active participation in Christ. So it's not to be passive. It's not to do nothing. No, as branches, we cannot bear fruit of ourselves. John 15, 5. All we can or should do is simply abide and participate in what Christ is doing. Now, I will grant you that requires that you're aware that you're in a union relationship and that you're aware of what Christ is wanting to do through you. And so as you are, it's because of our union life in Christ that we bear much fruit. And therefore, it is only reasonable that we by faith, anticipate, expect, and frankly, look forward to the fruit of our abiding in Christ. Yes, anticipate that. You see, seeking or striving only indicates that we have been deceived into thinking that we're not in union, we're separate from Christ, and that we're trying to do something for Him. No, remember, He is always our ability. Our life flows from Him. It is a derived life, the derived character expression of Christ. He is the source of life, and apart from Him, we can do nothing, John 15, 5. But because of Him, we can expect to bear His fruit. Jesus' words in John 15, 4 remind us of this. Abide in me and I and you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. And so, ministry is the result of abiding. Our fruitfulness, or ministry results from abiding in Christ. The purpose of the Christian's life and ministry is to bear much fruit. In John 15, 16, Jesus states, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain that whosoever, so that whatsoever ye shall ask in the Father's name, he may give it you, end of quote. Notice the emphasis of our Lord. He's, he's emphasizing that ministry is a result of his calling and not our efforts. It's him choosing us not us choosing him. And furthermore, the fruit that we bear will remain. It is an eternal fruit. It has the nature of God written all over it. It is the fruit of the Spirit that lasts for eternity, that lasts forever. Anticipating fruit, ladies and gentlemen, is the natural result of faith. Our faith anticipates bearing fruit because of our union with Christ. Faith does not seek, 
but it anticipates what only God can do and wants to do. Faith is always receptive to grace. The person, you and I, the person who understands their identity in Christ knows that Christ is their ability to do whatever Christ commands us to do. And so we see that Christ is the source of ministry. Ministry is the outflowing of Christ's life through us. He is the sum total of all ministry because all true ministry is Christ manifesting his life. This, in short, is the gospel. Jesus says in John 15, 7, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So, we can ask whatever because of our union reality in Christ, and we're not going to be asking something that's inconsistent with that. Many question their motives at this point. Remember, there are both psychological and spiritual motivation. If you are in Christ, your spiritual motivation is good because he is good. Your true motive aligns with what he is doing in you. So don't be concerned or worried about that. You have the mind of Christ. In John 15, 8, Jesus states that we prove to be his disciples by demonstrating or bearing much fruit. This is not a work on our part, but rather a working out of what Christ is working in and through us. As Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13 tells us that this, this it describes this spiritual workout. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. You see, seeking fruit is not producing fruit. You don't, you don't seek try to produce fruit. Trying to become like Jesus is not only impossible, but can also lead to becoming a wolf in sheep's clothing. Those who seek ministry have not discovered that all ministry or fruitfulness is a byproduct of being connected to the Lord Jesus Christ as their very life. Even Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So even Jesus anticipated doing mighty works in his ministry. Why? Because he understood who he was. He understood that he was joined to the spirit of his heavenly father and that he was participating with his father. He was one with the father, John 17, 21. We can believe and anticipate bearing much fruit or doing mighty works because of who Christ is and who we are in Christ. We are union selves, ladies and gentlemen. The two have become one. Our identity in Christ produces fruit and is the breeding ground of great faith. Living, I want to challenge you to live in union anticipation. We know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Philippians 4.13 It is through Christ, not through our efforts, apart from Him. It is His ability which becomes our strength. He is our ability. He is our strength. He is our ministry. He is our life. And as a result, we are not separate beings having to do something for Him, but rather as we abide in him, we can do all things. As we begin to live in union anticipation, we begin to understand true worship. Jesus said in John 4, 24, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, worship is a 
function of the Spirit and can only happen as we understand who we are in union identity in Christ. And that is why we must worship in spirit and in truth. Jesus said in John 15, 8, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Worship occurs when we live out of our union identity in Christ with a faith awareness that we will bear his fruit, proving our ministry is of him. It is Christ in me and through me as my life that glorifies the Father. The end product of abiding, the, the abiding life of Jesus Christ is anticipation of an, a bearing fruit, which will cause us to bow before him in worship. What a glorious thought. As John 15, 9 records Jesus' words, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Don't seek a ministry. Anticipate the fruit of your union life in Christ and worship him by being who you are in Christ today.